Okay, sorry, that was super close. I can't help but belabor this topic a little bit more. For those of you who are just catching up, there was a triple homicide last week in Pensacola, Florida. It was brutal and horrible. Three people were bludgeoned to death with a claw hammer, their throats were slit, one of them was shot with a gun. It was a mother, elderly, and two sons. The family was reclusive, uh, and there is supposedly a person of interest in the case. Uh, but the reason that this has made the news and caught my attention is the local sheriff, uh, Sheriff Morgan for Pensacola, Florida, is really sure that this is an instance of witchcraft. And initially he called the killings Wiccan ritual killings and cited them as being tied to the blue moon. Now, that that statement alone got a whole heck of a lot of backlash from a number of well-informed pagan elders, as well as people who just know a little bit about paganism or can do a freaking Google search, because clearly Sheriff Morgan cannot. Once he got that, that backlash, he, well, he backpedaled a little bit, but in that sorry, not sorry sort of way. I am going to read from you, uh, or read to you, from WEARTV.com, uh, where he gives a little bit of a rejoinder to the allegations of, why are you blaming Wiccans? So let's first go on about uh, his statements at the press conference Tuesday afternoon. Um, Escambia County Sheriff David Morgan said, the motive behind the family's death could be linked to the blue moon and rituals, and quote, because of the method of the deaths, the way they were positioned, and unfortunately, the gruesomeness of it ties to ritualistic murders. Now, again, we tie those things to specific sects. It's spelled sex, S-E-X, in uh, the article, but I'm pretty sure that what he meant was sects, S-E-C-T-S, -E and that is what he said, um, but when they were tr transcribing it, they got it wrong. Anyway, now again, we tie those things to specific sects, sometimes beliefs, etc., to show that pattern. And, and that's Morgan again. Uh, he states that there is a person of interest who is not in custody, as it turns out. Uh, that person has been interviewed, and several, uh, in, several authorities in the case say that this person has been confirmed as someone who practices some form of witchcraft, but the exact type of witchcraft has not been specified. So... Uh, this is Morgan again. Does this white male practice witchcraft? We believe so, Amber. And again, under what circumstances? We have asked the individual if they are a part of a particular covenant that was denied. And yes, he uses the word covenant. I'm pretty sure he means coven. Um, <clears throat> again, Morgan quoted, No, I'm not an independent. We're going here based on self-reporting, self-affirmation of being a practitioner of... I guess witchcraft, there's an ellipsis in the quote. At that juncture, I would only believe those statements by the individual. Okay, so he's only going to believe what group this person belongs to if the person states it. I, I guess that that's a fair enough assessment, uh, given that he categorically said that it was obviously witchcraft and that this person practices witchcraft. But now that he's taken some heat, he's willing to back down and say, we'll ask the person first. I guess that's okay, Sheriff Morgan. Maybe you should have done that to begin with. Anyhow, it gets, oh, it gets bad in the last part of this. Let me read it, and we're going to get into, like, what witchcraft is, because he's back down from the point that it is Wicca. I think enough people have schooled him on the fact that Wicca mostly involves a whole lot of people in circles drawing down the goddess and having fun. I mean, they're tree huggers. They're not murderers. The worst they're going to do is hug you to death. Seriously. Anyway, <laughs> so let's go back to his quote. This is, this is the, oh, this is the money shot, guys, it's horrible. Open quote, Sheriff Morgan. I know of no instructional manual that would tell someone the murders must occur on this day, the day of the blue moon. What it looks as though it appears to be from our research, yes, that bad grammar is not me, that is a direct quote. Let me, let me start again, it's really horrible. What it looks as though it appears to be from our research is that it's a period of time, so a murder can may have occurred in a particular month, and anything extracted from a victim, like an article of clothing or something of intimate apparel that needs to be taken and used in a ceremony, could be used at a different time. Still quoting our... our erudite Sheriff Morgan, I don't know that there is any shelf life attached to those sort of practices. Okay, let us deconstruct this, because that's a whole bunch of word salad, first of all. Uh, 
So he, he, he was trying at first to say that this was a witchcraft murder because it occurred around the time of the blue moon. Now, they discovered the dead people on the night of the blue moon, Friday, but they date the murders themselves to Tuesday. Uh, since he got a lot of heat for that, he is now trying to claim that it's still connected to a ritual for the blue moon because clearly whoever murdered these people was after what amounts to spell ingredients. Okay, so we haven't had a type of witchcraft, and arguably this was never actually a type of witchcraft in the first place. It was a whole lot of hokum, but I'll get into that in a minute. Um, we haven't had a type of witchcraft that requires the body parts of dead people for spell components since the 1400s and 1500s during the witch craze. Now, understand that the spells that come down to us from that time are things that are told to us, that are more legendary than anything else. They are part of superstition that are tied directly to what Wiccans know as the burning times, but what we more prosaically know as, as pretty much, it's the European witch craze. It was a time where all of Europe went mad with the belief that their neighbors were doing horrible things to one another, casting spells, meeting and having sex with the devil in the woods at midnight, uh, sacrificing babies to make uh, candles out of their fat, and a whole bunch of other crazy stuff. But it mostly came down to singling out uh, folks who lived on the fringe in communities who looked a little different, who acted a little different, uh, or maybe who believed and practiced a little differently, and finding really good excuses to take their land, their property, and their lives. Uh, the witch craze is a truly ugly period of our history. It is hotly disputed in terms of how many people died um, and, and were, were pretty much murdered, state, state and religion sanctioned murder, uh, and, and hunted down. But there are, there are reports from the time period uh, in, in whole villages in Germany that by the time they were done uh, accusing one neighbor to the next neighbor to the next neighbor, whole villages were almost bereft of people completely. But let's get to spells that require human body parts. Uh, the one that struck my mind immediately when he's talking about, hey, I think that they were killing people in order to take body parts or articles of clothing, um, witchcraft related, and even then it's a little wibbly whether or not it is, is something called the Hand of Glory. Uh, there is a great folklorist, uh, Sabine Baring Gould, who has a lovely little bit, and I will link it when I post this back up on Facebook for everybody, about the Hand of Glory. Uh, the thing about the Hand of Glory and related articles like it, um, and this is important, the vast majority of items where you needed parts of a corpse Almost in all cases, the corpses that you might be taking things from in these stories of witchcraft uh, talismans, you're taking them from dead people who are murderers, people or thieves, who usually were hung at the crossroads or in some public part, and you'd sneak up to the gallows late at night, allegedly, and cut off their hand or cut off some, some other bit. Uh, and the Hand of Glory specifically was the hand of a murderer, uh, which was then preserved and... Uh, the tendons were tweaked so that it was in a fist, uh, and once it was preserved in a fist, it was made to hold a candle. And it was strangely believed that when you burned the candle for the hand of glory, it would make everybody in a household either fall asleep or it would render you invisible. Either way, it was supposedly a really useful thing for thieves to go lop off the hand of a murderer who had been hung in the town square or the crossroads, preserve this hand, and then go run amok and steal everybody's jewels. Uh, it's it's really the stuff of legend. It's really the stuff of fiction. Um, it, it's stuff, Robert Southey uh, discusses it. It's the sort of stuff that shows up in really, really titillating stories of the time. But did people run around doing this? Highly unlikely. There's... <laughs> Another tradition, the Grimoireic tradition, magical books that were circulated uh, throughout uh, primarily Western Christian Europe, although there's, there's a more extensive circulation of them. Um, I write a lot about them in my Dictionary of Demons that is not a, a sales pitch. That's just if you really, really want to go poke around and learn more about the Grimoireic tradition, that's the place to go look. Um, but the one that comes to mind with that is the Red Dragon Grimoire. And the reason that this also leapt out to me is some of the grimoires were, in fact, 
legitimate magical texts. They talked about summoning, binding, and compelling spirits. Some of those spirits were identified as fallen angels, some as evil spirits, some as perfectly good spirits. Most of them were concerned with basically how to get it on with a lady. Uh, almost, there are so many, a, a ridiculous number of spells for how to make somebody fall in love with you uh, that clearly they just needed Viagra or, I don't know, because half of the spells are the metaphysical equivalent of a roofie. Um, it, it shows kind of where people's brains were when they were writing these. Uh, some of them are higher magic, uh, where you would summon a spirit in order to have it educate you. You would summon a spirit to teach you the language of birds, uh, the language of animals, or to pick out a horse at the races. Um, and that's a really, really old tradition. That goes back to uh, tablets that were left under the floorboards of the Colosseum in Rome, where they would invoke various gods and goddesses to help their particular chariot team win. I mean, it's, it's a time-honored tradition, I guess, to use magic for very, well, low personal purposes. Notably, most of these don't require body parts. When they do require body parts, those body parts are usually harvested from corpses. The Red Dragon Grimoire has a ritual that... This is the kicker. Um, the corpse bits that you're supposed to get, you're supposed to go into a graveyard on Christmas Eve, the dead of freaking winter, dig up in a churchyard a grave with your bare hands then get the bones, walk into a church during midnight mass, and throw the bones at the altar. That sounds ridiculous? Yes, that should sound absolutely ridiculous. It should sound like something that somebody made up and posted on their Facebook page and are hoping that somebody will turn into a viral meme and say, dude, people are really doing this. But you'd know these days that somebody was trolling you if they posted that somebody did that. And in fact, in this grimoire, somebody is basically trolling you. I don't know if you have ever tried to just turn the earth, just shovel a, a shovel full of dirt in the dead of winter, uh, but with a shovel you're going to break your back, let alone trying to get all the way down six feet under, typically, to get to an actual corpse and unearth it. But to dig a corpse up with your bare hands in the middle of winter is, it's not going to happen. It's, it's just fantasy. It's, this entire ritual is written to be the most bizarre and offensive thing, and, and that's part of it. Like, there's, there's a whole lot of shock value. In some cases of the grimoires, people who are trying to look ooky spooky write a couple of fake grimoires, and pretty much they're like internet trolls where they end up, you know, laughing behind their hands when anybody finds them and then takes that stuff seriously. That's not to say that all of the grimoires or the entire grimoire tradition is a whole bunch of hokum, because many of those books are, were written to be serious magic. Um, and it's pretty easy to tell the difference from one thing to the other. You've, you've got the high ceremonial magic, you've got the low magic that involves getting it on with the ladies and making people fall in love with you, and then you've got just the crazy ass shit, like running around through cemeteries in order to disrupt somebody's midnight mass because apparently that's cool. That's cool to be ooky spooky. Why that is cool is at the heart of the European witch craze was a whole lot of marginalizing the other. And I've said a little bit about, you know, picking on um, women as witches were, were a big part of that. But uh, another, and I, I hope I'm not stepping on any toes with this, but another marginalized faction of society that was targeted with a lot of the beliefs back then were the Jews. Uh, and beliefs that were circulated for them, and it's also why we call witches sabbats, witches sabbats. Um, it's a lot of confusion. The Jews at the time were believed to steal the, the host um, from Christian sacred ceremony in order to pierce it with nails and make it bleed and scream and torture it. They were believed to abduct children and, and shove them down wells and kill them and poke them and torture them, uh, make them give up their god. It's a whole bunch of fucking bullshit, honestly, made up by people who see an outside group who feel very, very intimidated by that outside group, and who make up a whole lot of terrible stories about that group because they don't bother to walk up to them and ask them, what do you actually believe? What do you actually practice? It looks strange to me, but what is really going on? And that brings me full circle to our dear, beloved Sheriff Morgan. 
he seems to really buy into the kind of stuff from the witch craze, the kind of horrible hokey magic that was dreamt up in the Malleus Maleficarum, uh, the stuff that really honestly is the product of bizarrely erotic, sadistic fantasies of people who were, I think, hoping that there were other people running around doing these things. I mean, in the Malleus Maleficarum, witches were believed to steal men's penises and keep them in, <laughs> I kid you not, keep them in little bird's nests and feed them on milk and honey. And this is why, you know, Johnny Boy couldn't get it up because a witch stole his dick. I, it's 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 crazy pants. It's super crazy pants. And the fact that it has informed the majority of people's belief in what witchcraft is for hundreds of years and up until the 50s or so was still something that most people would fall back on and that Sheriff Morgan seems to be falling back on even now. I mean, I thought we were done with this shit. Okay, so what Sheriff Morgan is really doing is he is hearkening back to that time period in the worst way possible. He's not stopping to educate himself about what people actually do. He has a set of assumptions, and he is in this elected position of authority, and he is gleefully spouting a whole bunch of nonsense. And for people who don't know any better, this is what they're going to hear. Witches kill people in order to harvest body parts to do we don't know what kind of strange, nefarious ritual that might have something to do with a blue moon, and what we can tell you is it must be bad. That's no way to solve a murder. That is a great way to completely derail yourself, your investigation, and bias things with, with such, such horribly colored, misguided glasses that you will miss what is lying right in front of you for what is actually going on. Whoever killed these people, and it is a tragedy, it is horrible the way these people died. It is brutal and violent and really suggests a level of very personal violence. Very invested anger and hatred to bludgeon someone to death with a hammer. A hammer is a really personal tool of murder. Worrying about whether or not it's witches worrying that you found the damn bodies on the night of the blue moon and thinking that that is what's going to solve the murder, I am sorry, but all you are doing is deluding yourself and making an ass out of anybody in Pensacola who actually backs this idea. Belanger out.